take a listen to this at um, Dr. Duke show. Um, really good show. Um, it, you know, it's conservative. And uh, this says four-year-olds given book about gay men. Check this out. There is a group of Muslim parents who complained that a, one of their uh, parents' four-year-old children came home from school with a book about the lives of a gay couple and their son. The parents are part of this parent support group in Hounslow, and now they're objecting to the book because of the children's age. A four-year-old coming home with this book. If you um, are a Christian and you send your kids to uh, public schools, uh, I mean, gosh, it's become such an antichrist indoctrination center. It's unbelievable. I mean, my goodness, I've did multiple videos on the horrific things that is going on right now with um, liberals and um, uh, Democrats uh, doing things here. And the book is called Daddy's Roommate. It includes everyday scenes of men shaving together in their underwear and resting in bed. Uh, and the group is saying the content is inappropriate for young children, regardless of faith. This has nothing to do with faith. They're saying they're four-year-olds. They should not be looking at this. Um, and so, a, of course, a spokeswoman for the LGBT Muslims group slammed the statements from these parents. Um, and they didn't name any of the parents. And they're saying that this is traditional homophobia dressed up as a faith issue. But it is interesting to see how progressive Muslims now are beginning to turn on traditional Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the, the fact that parents are standing up, and the, the progressive Muslim is wrong. The progressive Muslims are as wrong as the progressive educrats in England. There is no reason mm -hmm. to expose four-year-olds to any of this. Absolutely none. The thing that gets me, though, is the title of the book is, so they're so radical in p pushing this agenda on pre preschoolers, basically, right? Little, little kids. But they don't call it what it is. They're cowards. Come on, man, sack up, uh, UK Muslim progressives. Sack up, UK educrats. Why don't you just call it daddy's husband instead of daddy's roommate? I mean, if you're going to be absolutely developmentally inappropriate. If you're going to abuse little kids this way, do it transparently. Call it what it is. Well, we also have uh, Ezra Stripe, who's a spokesperson uh, for Herdaya, I think that's how you say it, which says it supports and uplifts LGBT Muslims and said it was important for even young children to understand two mothers or two fathers was normal and acceptable. Um, I don't think teaching a kid about homosexuality will make them homosexual. I do think it's an inbuilt thing, but at the same time, more people will realize it at a younger age if they have access to information about it. Okay. Yeah. Wait, you're asking for, you're, you're, you're having four-year-olds access information, right? Yeah. That you're, you're going to create tolerance by literally brainwashing kids into believing certain things that they're too young to even understand. Look, there's no, I'm not arguing you should start teaching kids about, we, we've never argued. Western culture has never taught little tiny middle school kids about heterosexual sex. Never did it. Never, never felt the need to provide a four-year-old with access to condom information or access to how mommy and daddy sleep in the same bed and they're n really not wrestling, Junior. We never used to do that, but now we got to do it because the special interest group says so. The Department of Education over there said, for the first time, we're making relationships education. So get ready for that terminology. Relationships education. Learning how to treat each other with kindness and consideration. Compulsorily, compulsory, in all primary schools by next year, by 2020. This will provide the building blocks for positive relationship. Uh, when the new lessons come into effect in 2020, parents will have the right to request that their child be withdrawn from sex education but will not be able to withdraw children from relationships Which education. is going to be primarily about sex, right? Absolutely. Uh, over and over again, the relationship curriculum will become a sex curriculum, and you can't opt your kids out of it. Oh, and we're going to teach these kids, not math and English and reading, we're going to teach them relationship education, which is going to come to down. It's already dominated the curriculum, and we're going to teach them kindness and tolerance, unless 10% of gays rebel against 5% of Muslims, right? And 0% of Christian representation. That's your t kindness, tolerance, and inclusion progressive style yeah tolerance that's a complete and total uh lie equality um the liberal interpretation of equality is not equality um i like a quote from candace owens someone posted we need to stop calling them liberals and begin ref referring to them as exactly what they are American communists that wish to partake in the destruction of Western civilization.
I don't understand how people can't see the disturbing parallels between 19, 1940s Nazis and Democrats today. I mean, you have the, the Nazis committed a Holocaust, and you know we're in a Holocaust right now with abortion. With people, uh, liberals are very passionate about defending their abortion rights of killing babies. You know, so um, how do you not see the disturbing parallels um, with the fascism uh, in the liberal Democratic Party today, uh, wanting to make laws? to sue someone for um, not calling someone by their preferred gender pronoun. That actually happened, I did another video um, talking about, uh, there was an old, an old man, he was fined $55,000 um, for something like that. There was an article that, um, I believe uh, Dr. Um, James White commented on. Um, he said, want to know one of the most aggressive totalitarian states when it comes to the promotion and forced acceptance of the most radical revolutionary ideas of sexual anarchy? Look no further than Canada. This is evil, wicked, and must be stopped. Um, I believe it was this article he was uh, referring to. Uh, father gagged, found guilty of, quote, family violence for calling his trans daughter a she. Um, uh, Supreme Court, uh, British Columbia, uh, Canada declared a father guilty of family violence against his 14-year-old daughter on the sole basis that he had engaged in expressions of rejection of her gen uh, gender identity. These expressions revolved entirely around his polite refusal to refer to his daughter as a boy in private. And his steady choice to affirm that she is a girl in public. Uh, a previous, previously reported, the uh, the BC Supreme Court ordered in February that 14-year-old Maxine receive testosterone injections without parental consent. Accordingly, um, Maxine began regular injections at. British Columbia, B.C., Children's Hospital over the course of the last two months. This is absolutely insane. The, uh, I mean, what can you, what can you uh, uh, say to um, the, uh, the, the child abuse that that's, the, the Liberal Democratic Party is uh, committing? I said this before. Um, the only difference between a 1940s Nazi and a Democrat today are intentions. Uh, intentions. They're committing the same sins. They're committing a Holocaust. They're committing fascism. Uh, what difference do you see? I mean, I mean, besides intentions and the way they dressed, um, they're committing the... Uh, same sins. Um, God's word, you know, tells us in um, Proverbs, it's, uh, I had that verse, where is it now? I, uh, jumped off the page and I wanted to um, throw it here in this um, uh, in this video um, Proverbs 10 20 um, God's word tells us the heart of the wicked is worth little 
the the this craze for um promoting indoctrinating kids to be homosexual friendly this is the result if you read romans 1 uh, chapter 1 romans 1 in the bible uh, you'll have a picture of what a nation under the judgment of god looks like this you know the west is under the judgment of god currently god is withdrawing his grace um, and he's delivering people over to the sins and the lies that they want to believe and when that happens in a culture, you'll see that homosexuality becomes uh, a big thing. And that's spoken about in Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32. I've recommended books before um, because as Christians, um, there is going to be serious persecution coming, I believe, I think. Um, in the United States, it's already here, but I think it's going to get a lot worse the way that um, uh, things are going. And Christians have to be mentally, spiritually prepared for this. Um, this this is not this is not a joke. This is no playing around. We have to be ready to give a defense for what we believe. We believe the Bible is God's word. We have to proclaim the gospel to people. We have to tell them um, that God commands everyone to repent of their sins and, and believe on Jesus, and he has to be their Lord. That he, he, he took the wrath of God on the cross for the sins of his people. He was resurrected. We believe on faith alone. We'll be saved from God's wrath, eternal, the eternal um, punishment of hell that Jesus spoke about. But um, I recommended some books uh, in defense of the Christian faith, uh, that's what apologetics is. Um, I believe pre presuppositional apologetics is the most biblical way to do apologetics. There's some really good books I recommended. Uh, Always Ready by uh, Greg Bonson, Dr. Bonson, um, Dr. Jason Lyle, Ultimate Proof of Creation, um, Confounding the Critics by Bodhi Hodge. Um, Highly recommend the ministry of um, Apologia uh, Church. Um, Jeff Durbin is one of the pastors, and um, and he does a lot of uh, street preaching, and he interacts with uh, liberals uh, and uh, atheists, and um, he's very presuppositional. There was a really good debate he did in California. If you go to uh, YouTube and type in Epic Debate on God's Existence. And it's really great debate. It was three against three, uh, Christian versus atheist. And um, we, God's word commands Christians to give a defense for what we believe. And we... We have to do that. If we, I mean, if you love something, you're going to want to defend it if someone's speaking wrongly. I mean, if someone has a spouse and they hear someone speaking wrongly against their spouse, if they do love their spouse, they're going to want to defend their spouse. There's no question. I see Christians trying to make every excuse in the world to try to um, ignore 1 Peter 3.15, which is a biblical command from God that we are commanded to give a defense for what we believe. We don't need to be Bible scholars to do, to do this. We don't need to have answers for everything to do this, to give a defense for what we believe. There is serious persecution coming on Christians, and um, it's coming from the, Lib the Democratic Party, the liberals. Um, they are pushing for socialism, um, which is the next step below uh, communism. Um, our freedom is being taken away. And my goodness, just go look at some of my videos that I've done um, on all that. If, if it has liberal or something like that, Democrat in the title of it, you'll see me go through some um, disturbing news reports. But um, our freedom is going, and um, Christians are going to have to be ready. 
because um, unfortunately, I'm I see the great majority of the ones that I see they're on such an such a infantile baby level of the Bible that their level of uh, their understanding of theology and biblical theology and so on is extremely beyond pathetic. And uh, the Bible says that we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved and be ready to give a defense for what we believe. And um, that's what Christians, I think, should really be uh, concentrating on. That and the giving of, of, of the gospel to people. Because, and you know what? Also, I, I said before, um, having a biblical worldview means that um, we are guided by all of our actions, by our theology, our biblical theology. Um, we look at everything through the lens of what the Bible says, and we're guided by all of our actions, by our theology, our biblical theology. And since voting, you know, politics, we, we vote, and since that has to do with um, laws that have to do with moral issues that the Bible addresses. Um, we Christians need to be trying to vote as conservative as we can and be involved because, um, you know, parents, this is the world you're leaving um, uh, for your kids. This, you know, uh, my goodness, what they say, 65% of millennials um, want socialism. Uh, Generation Z, that's this uh, coming younger generation is uh, by some of the, it's being called the first uh, truly secularized um, generation. So that's, that's scary, but we know God has everything in, under control and God has a certain elect people, but we need to seriously uh, be ready to um, proclaim the gospel and defend the gospel. Um, the Bible is uh, you know, under attack all over the place. We have um, um, social media. We're in the, in the internet age. We live in the age of the internet where it's so simple for people to uh, Google something and get a whole bunch of arguments against the Bible and just throw it at Christians and the great majority of Christians that I see are not even close to being as ready uh, to engaging in meaningful uh, apologetics. And I encourage you to uh, to do that, to be ready to give a defense. Um, I think a really important uh, thing is when we present the gospel, um, I think it's very important to bring to the non-believers attention that um, what God's word says in Romans 1 that the only reason um, why a person really rejects the gospel I mean people make up any excuse in the world but the, the heart of the reason is because they love their sin and they want to suppress the truth they don't want to believe they have a bias and um, they don't want to live the way God uh, God wants them to live, so they are suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. Romans 1 really goes to the very heart of the issue, and I think it's effective and important to bring that up to a non-believer in, uh, in our witnessing. So, please, um, God's word says to be ready to give a defense for what we believe, and we have to proclaim the gospel to people. This is a gospel issue.